Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures. This is Steve. Right now we're in Tucumcari, New Mexico, and we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. I think most people have heard of Four Corners where four different states meet up. Well, we're going to be doing one worse than that. We're going to try to head to the spot where three different states meet up. New Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma. And of course, we'll see what there is to see along the way as we travel through northeastern New Mexico. So let's hit the road and visit the the three corners or the tri-state boundary. I'm not even sure what it's called, but let's go. We're starting our journey here on Route 66. Tucumcari is a great Route 66 town with a few iconic spots, but really the only reason this is our starting point today is because we slept here last night. Now that we're on the road, it should take about two hours to get from here to northeastern New Mexico where the three states meet up. Well, it's going to take us longer because I'm sure we're going to make a few stops along the way. I doubt many people take the back roads to venture to the spot where these three states meet up, and I'm not sure there's much of anything there. But I'm looking forward to seeing a seldom visited part of New Mexico, and also a little slice of Texas and Oklahoma too. We're now in the town of Naravisa, and there's an old gas station across the street. And then over here, there's another old building. I'm not sure what this one was. This building that looks like a house has cafe painted on it. Unfortunately, it's all marked no trespassing here, so we just have to take a look at it from the sidewalk. Here's an old motor court. It doesn't look like anything in this town has been open in quite some time. Its glory days ended over 60 years ago. Its school shut down in the 1960s. This building was apparently being used as an antique store at some point, but like everything else in the town, it looks like it's been closed for quite some time. Here's another old gas station. This town got its start in the early 1900s due to the railroad. In fact, the railroad depot was the first building to be built in town. The railroad still comes through here, but no longer stops. But the railroad bypassing the town was only one nail in the coffin. The town never really recovered from the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. To illustrate how long this station has been closed, you have a pump for unleaded. And you have a pump for regular. There's actually a couple of cars in the garage here. But it's time for us to head back on the road and try to make it to three corners. There were quite a few cars on the road between Tucumcari and Naravisa, but now it feels like we're practically alone out here. I know it probably doesn't come off well on the camera, but off in the distance those mountains, they're volcanoes that were active several million years ago. So we've made it to the town of Clayton, and the drive here from Naravisa didn't have much traffic at all. We counted and only four cars passed us in the other direction over the 60 mile drive. But anyways, here at Clayton, it's a pretty cool and historic town and it's been voted the most haunted town in New Mexico. So we're gonna take a look around and who knows, maybe we'll see a ghost. This old church is now the Hertzstein Museum, the local history museum for the area. We'll start out here and maybe we can find out where the ghosts are. There have been dinosaur footprints found in the area and I suspect that's the reason for this dinosaur. I personally don't believe in ghosts, but apparently this museum is one of the places in town that is haunted. The person running the museum even told us she has experienced some supernatural events here herself. I always recommend checking out local museums, and I highly recommend this place if you find yourself in Clayton. They are incredibly knowledgeable and super friendly here. They were pretty surprised to hear that we drove all the way out here to find the place where the three states meet. 
I had to laugh because they've seen ghosts, but think that I'm crazy. We've left the museum, and this is a pretty cool old town. We'll walk over to Main Street and check out some of the historic sites real quick. Here's Main Street. This town was founded in 1887 and was hit hard by the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. For anyone who doesn't know, the Dust Bowl was a series of dust storms that devastated the plains in the 1930s, and this area was right near the epicenter of it. It absolutely destroyed farms and the economy of the area, and a lot of people just up and left. The Isaacs Hardware Company was one of the oldest hardware stores in the country, having opened in 1898, but it just closed last year after 125 years in business. Here's the Eklund Hotel, supposedly one of the most haunted places in town. The part of the building that is the saloon opened in 1892, and the building was expanded in phases into the early 1900s. It's said that a maid named Irene haunts room 307 and creaks the floorboards and makes faces in the wallpaper. It's only open on the weekend, so we can't look inside today, unfortunately. I guess even ghosts need their day off. Just at a quick glance, you could tell this was a J.C. Penny at one point. And yep, it's still written on the entrance. Here's an old movie theater, the Luna Theater, and its marquee is incredible. And also, I find it hilarious that they're playing Ghostbusters. I'd love to see this lit up at night. This theater opened in 1915, and at the museum they told us the basement of the theater used to be a bowling alley. Probably the most famous person in Clayton's history since they've made movies about him was Tom Blackjack Ketchum, and he apparently haunts the courthouse. Blackjack was a notorious outlaw who was hung here in 1901 for a train robbery. The execution was botched though, and during the hanging, his head came off. So you could see why he might want to haunt the town. There's a lot to see in Clayton, and I wish I would have planned things out to have more time here. I definitely want to get back to this town and explore more of its history, but we're only a few miles from our destination, so it's time to get back on the road. We've made it to the northwesternmost corner of Texas. That's actually Texas behind me. But due to a weird quirk in New Mexico's geography, Oklahoma's about two and a half miles away down this dirt road. If you've ever wondered what's at the northwesternmost corner of Texas, well, here it is. It's that little block of cement in front of us. Here's a closer look at the survey marker showing this is the northeast corner of Texas. But we didn't come here for two states, we came here for three states. So let's head about two and a half miles to the east. I don't think a lot of people realize that New Mexico borders Texas to the north. In the 1800s, when they surveyed the border between Texas and the New Mexico territory, they made a mistake and put the border with Texas too far to the west. It wasn't noticed until the early 1900s, and New Mexico had to accept the border as part of getting statehood. The border with Oklahoma is where the western border of Texas and New Mexico should have been. We've made it. There's New Mexico. There's Oklahoma. And here's Texas. I know you're probably watching this shocked that this place doesn't get many visitors, but there's actually a marker right over there, so let's go check that out. We'll have to 
walk into Oklahoma here. Let's cross this cattle guard. They don't want any Texas or Oklahoma cows getting into New Mexico, I guess. Or maybe it's New Mexico cows getting into Texas and Oklahoma. But I believe we should be in Texas now. Maybe not as impressive as the Four Corners Monument. But then again, how many people could say they've been here? How many people could say they wanted to be here, I guess? But here it is, where the three states meet. You can't really stand on it to be in all three states at the same time, so we'll just make do. Only about 30 miles north of here, almost on the border with New Mexico, is the highest point in Oklahoma. Maybe it was a little crazy driving four hours out of the way for this. But for me, the journey to get here made it all worth it. So that's our journey to the spot where New Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma meet. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.